So, Kawhi Chan here. I'm playing with my boy Sean Bay here. Um, so, um, what to talk about? Let's talk about the pool deck here and that hammock over there in that little house. What we have in here is all enrichment. Yeah, this guy's. Yeah. That's yeah. all we hear. Money. <laughs> That's all we yeah. hear. Yeah. Bark, bark, bark. So, what we have over here, we want to do over here. Ah. Yeah. So. What is it gonna take? About 1,200 bucks. 1,200 so, bucks. Yeah, we actually have about 600 already, so we need another right. six or 800 dollars, and uh, we can go on there. But along with that structure stuff that we want to build in here, we have to reinforce all the fencing. So let's go back over. This is what I mean by reinforcing. You know, we're putting in extra pipe. Oh yeah, nice. Extra pipe, uh, painting up rusty spots, uh, putting extra ties on to make this stronger. Why stronger? Because Florida has hurricanes. We're also putting a lid on, you know, ah. so this one already has a lid, but we want to strengthen all these. So what we actually do is like you've seen over there, we're gonna add uprights, uh -huh. to push this in, down to the ground, and we're gonna cap the footer with uh, concrete, okay? So it'll be nice and strong. Uh, wherever it might bow, it's gonna push back up. Any kind of rust damage we will replace, and uh, any stuff that's just kind of worn or rusted and not actually rusted through or damaged, we'll just uh, sand it down and, and uh, do some painting. So this is one of the, um, going forward, we did half of it already, that half's done. Yep. We just gotta get this half done. So re refurbishing like this, we already started working on it. You can see we, uh, we're touching up the gates, painting them up, getting them nice. We gotta change the automatic waterers out. We already have the waterers, they're sitting on the table. Awesome. Uh, so that's part of the remodel project. And look, nothing lasts forever. This was actually built in 2005. So, you know, you think about it, that's quite a long time that it actually lasted. Because, um, uh, what, that's 12, 15, 15, 17 yeah. years, 18 yeah, that's, years. Yeah. That's uh, quite a long time. Nice. Um, and actually, believe it or not, it was all built out of used material. There was a facility that was closed down uh, by uh, FWC and U uh, USDA. Uh, we rescued uh, seven cats that year, and we basically went to that facility, tore everything down, and put it back up here. The only thing we did different is we made everything larger. So everything that they were in when they came here, they were in something double or triple the size. And in the cages, in size, in, in the case of these, they were actually triple the size. So you're gonna, so. you were gonna actually, you want to put a deck, another pool over here too? Yeah, another pool. You want to yeah. just, yeah, the whole just idea this is, over the whole over idea here? is whenever we have to do maintenance on one side right they have the other side that they can oh, use gotcha. still sure you know so what that's why we start at trying to do double what we're required to do so at that point in time if you have double the area um, then you can put them in that area legally and never be illegal or have them in a space that's subpar now in the case of this enclosure this front side here is an actual legal enclosure so everything in the back, which is like double or triple the square footage, is extra, okay? And if wow. you look at the fact that the same thing exists over there, right? okay, the front side is double and the back size is quadruple. So realistically, this whole enclosure that they share is probably 10, si 10 times the size of regulation. Good, so, good, good. So, People don't real see, they see when they see pictures and videos, yeah. they think this is it. Yeah, they, yeah, the Same with yeah. the lockouts, you yeah, know? Yeah. Lockout and you know what, and I agree with everybody. I get the comments all the time. I put the videos on YouTube and people will say, um, well, that's really not a big enough enclosure for them or they should have much more room. Well, I mean, psychologically, I could tell them a lot of things, but I never argue with people. Mm -hmm. You know, because I agree with them. I, I just like, realistically, I do what I can. So my answer is always, you know, I don't argue with people. I just say, you know, you're right. But you know what? Send me 20 grand and I'll fix it right <laughs> now. Because that's all that's going to stop me is money. Right. So, so, like, I got a whole big piece of property over there. I could probably put them on a quarter of an acre. But... Mm -hmm. I need the money to do it, right. you know? So I have a whole big area out there that uh, we actually kind of just use as a campground right now. You know, so we, we go out right. there. It's really neat because we can camp out there and listen to the lion roar <laughs> that night. Camping in so, Africa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, um, so yeah, it's, um, but yeah, eventually we'd love to do that. I mean, so, yeah. these cats, sh show the love here. Show, oh, show, yeah, show yeah. love. No, look at this, like, these, a, you know, like a lot of people, keep a wonder, and, and now, I want people to understand that the, the, the behavior of this cat's not like the zoo cat, you know. Exactly. Uh, because the philosophy is different. You know, we raise them as pets. They 
raise them as wild animals. Yep. Uh, so it's a little bit different, but you got to realize that this cat did not come from another facility. He did not come from a place, you know, he wasn't traded between facilities. This cat was raised in my house. He, mm -hmm. you know, he was like maybe three weeks old when I got him. I bottle fed him uh -huh. and uh, I slept on the floor with them. Oh, you know? man. Um, so for the first six months of his life, Yes, yes. Give me kisses. Oh, for six months, first six months of his life, he slept on the floor with me, or I slept on the floor <laughs> with him. Yeah. And, and, you know, before you say, ooh, how cute, and right. that's so wonderful. Um, it was great. It was wonderful. It was a great experience. The unfortunate part is he was a bedwetter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Chambé. laughs> Daddy's telling your yeah, secrets. Yeah, yeah. Telling yeah, the tiger wasn't near. He, 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 was, he slept on the floor with us, too, but he always slept by my feet. You know, he just wasn't as lovable. But this guy was just a big teddy bear. He still is. He's just you a big teddy Chambé. bear. I would actually, I, you know, I tell people, is if it weren't for the tiger, I'd probably go in there and sleep with him because I trust him. <laughs> yeah. um, the tiger I don't trust very much. So <laughs> he, he, he comes over to you, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, I mean, he, he does, but he, he uh, sometimes he can get grumpy. Every but, time I... He sees you, man. Yeah. He's all over. Oh, yeah. Oh, I am yeah. the constant. So sometimes he's in a great mood, uh, but you'll notice I'm very different with him. Yep. I, I'll reach in when his head's up there, <laughs> but if his head comes this way, my hand will come out. Um, so I, I don't that. trust him as much, you know. But that's just the difference in behavior um, of the cats, you How know. How big is Subali? Subali's are is a little over 500 pounds, 500. so he's big. And the size comes from the bloodline. So, uh, uh, his father was a very large Siberian tiger, and his mother was a Bengal but she was white and the whites carry a size gene that's t attached to the what are we hearing tell everybody what we're so, hearing so you're hearing a chuff it's like a half purr and only the tigers do the chuff right right czar czar can you chuff and by the way subali czar is a combination of two words that make a compound name subali is a hindu word that means strong and of course a czar is an emperor so we've got two heritages mm. that i put into one, really is one name yep Subali Zar, strong the emperor. strong emperor. He is. Yes, he is. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. Yeah. Still very lovable. Yeah, oh, but yeah. he gets he's a little more moody, so. Oh yeah. So again, Kwai Chobi Animal Preserve, it's all about learning. You're never going to hear me talk without me trying to teach you something um, and uh, have you learn something or try to make a point. Uh, if you want to come out and visit, learn more about these animals. You just simply call us or find us online. The number is 239-352-5387. Online, just look up uh, kawaiichobi.org or Kawaii Chobi Animal Preserve on Facebook or a whole bunch of different social media outlets mm -hmm. like Instagram, uh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Wherever, wherever. You know, yeah, uh, you know and I am trying. Sure. I'm trying to learn to TikTok. Yep. Okay, so I'll be there soon. Um, but you just do not just show up here. Don't yeah, do just not show just show up here. Don't no, never, up, never, never, never. It's against don't. the law, actually. Yep, um, so you have to be invited. You have to be invited in. Um, there's also no admission. We do everything by donation. But we want you to remember that there is a cause behind this. This is about changing the future. This is about um, encouraging kids uh, in the area of conservation, teaching them the problems, more importantly, the answers. And what we want every kid out there to realize is that um, – it can only be done by with their help. They are the most important part of conservation. So teach your kids that change starts with them. That's what I'm putting on their T-shirts. Change starts with me. Amen. And I teach every child that when they come here because the governments aren't going to fix this problem. We are uh, because we are the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so God bless everyone. Good message. Thanks, John. <laughs> hey, Zar. See you, bud. See you, bud. Oh, cool. We'll see you, buddy. Thank you.